Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a fun video idea that, I'm sorry, my knitting got stuck on my needle. My VR knit. Okay, there we go. I am currently knitting a Christmas present. It is the 19th, and this has to go across the country. So I already told the person this is for that their present is going to be late because I am making it for them. And I got this video idea from Samantha, from Books with Samantha. I love Samantha so much. She's one of my closest friends on BookTube. We do have a book club together. And she did a video where she sat and colored and chatted with her followers. And so I thought it'd be fun to sit and chat with you guys about some bookish things so I wanted to focus on I'm gonna go like a little slow because I don't want to be too loud <laughs> while I'm talking normally I knit a little bit faster but I'm very aware of like the clickety clackety um but I am just doing I forget what this stitch is called but it's gonna be a cowl I cast on on like scrap yarn and I'm going to like stitch it together in the end but it's definitely not long enough I want it longer than that but Anyways, we're just gonna get some work done while getting a video done because I have been doing a video a day in December If you did not notice and it's been quite a lot I decided really last minute to do vlogmas just and I was like not wanting to feel left out and I did it two years ago And I really loved doing it. So I decided like four days before December started that I was gonna do vlogmas So zero pre-filming was done. I know some friends who have done it and they've they pre-filmed <laughs> and I'm flying by the seat of my pants I have the next two days done and that's it so I was like why not do this video right now it is 8 45 we just got done watching the Santa Claus 2 um, my sister and I and I edited my videos while I was watching that and and I was like I can read or usually I was on my sprints last night actually working on this too and with my patreon and I was listening to an audiobook but this kind of video is typically what I put on Patreon. I don't do as many like super chatty chatty videos on my channel, but I've got the time and I've got the space to fill on my channel, so why not? So I want to chat about tropes. There are a lot of tropes that seem to dominate 2023 and one of those was sports romance, specifically we all know hockey romance. Now I think that hockey romances will still definitely be written about because we have a bunch of authors that really made their name with hockey romances this year or that are in the middle of a hockey romance series. We have Candy Steiner writing her series, we have Emily Rath writing her series, so like a lot of them started their hockey romance series this year and everybody loved them and I think that hockey will still be big next year but I do think it's going to take a bit of a darker turn. So GN Wright wrote The Puck Secret which was definitely a lot angstier of a hockey romance and I love that more angsty tone to a sports romance and I'm all for it. I feel like even Iced Out by C.E. Ricky, it was definitely a little bit more angsty because it was hate to love and with that one they were like hooking up but not getting along still but hooking up because they thought it was like superstitious like they hooked up once it's mm and they won so like well now we gotta keep on doing it so i do think there's gonna be like a little bit of a grittier tone to hockey romances this year especially seeing how well the pucking wrong number went by someone else with initials i forget the the author's name but if i remember i will put some some covers up here i'm gonna hate myself editing saying that but i will put covers up so you guys know what i'm talking about but i also think that s mastery has her stalker hockey series out so i do think and i think that claire was it claire Contreras who wrote the one like dark hockey romance it wasn't like super super dark but it definitely had darker tones to it wrote um until i get you or until i have you last year so i think that that's kind of paving the way for what readers are really going towards is a lot grittier darker angstier hockey romances which i'm all for i would love to see some other sports i do see a lot of authors writing like not as popular sports so lulu moore actually got picked up by a british publisher because she's british she writes some baseball romances right now but she got picked up for a rowing romance we have chloe walsh who's been writing rugby romances so it'd be really cool to have some really unique romances with different sports which i would love seeing other sports that aren't primarily dominating the the world like maybe some swimming romances maybe more rugby i mean maybe more formula one like give us other sports other than hockey and I feel like football is really 
not as written about as anymore but like i think we're all over football after it dominating for like a decade in the romance industry so i don't see a lot of authors writing a lot of football romances but definitely in for the darker hockey romances i would love that i think i'm also definitely gearing up for a darker reading mood anyways i recently read what did i recently oh i read <laughs> i keep on i literally have talked about this in the last like four videos i've done the boys of Belrose series by tate james and jamin eve i have been so obsessed with and that's kind of mafia-esque and now i'm like and i read maria maravilla's mafia romance i'm so in the mood for mafia again i'm like who else can i read i just downloaded book two in l thorpe's same view prisoner series i think because i'm like i need darker romances right now whether that's mafia or motorcycle maybe it's because gianna darling's back and i am getting flashbacks to like 2015 2016 me where i was obsessed with motorcycle romances i would love for those to come back so we do have like sj tilly who is absolutely killing it with her alliance series so i need I need more dark romance. I would love more motorcycle romances as well. Like Ashley Munoz is where we started. She came out with that one and it's not like super dark, but it's definitely like a grittier romance than just like a cute second chance romance. I do really love small town romances, but I would love more angst to them. So like after the storm by Laura Pavlov delivered on the angst, it was so good. And I feel like I need that in my small town and I'm not as into like the cutesy sweet romances. Obviously, I'm still in my romantic suspense era. I want all everything romantic suspense. I'm reading two Nora Roberts books right now. I would love to read more Nora Roberts next year. And I think that Catherine Cowles is going to deliver on the romantic suspense next year. Absolutely. But I would love to find more authors like her writing small town with a little bit of danger in them because it just adds another layer to the book that has me obsessed. Not only am I obsessed with this small town romance and this couple falling in love and I love the cozy vibes of small town but like give me someone stalking someone or give me someone being a serial killer like adding that little dark element and Catherine's books aren't dark dark but definitely has a little bit of a suspense edge where you're like oh my god what's gonna happen I need that for sure I also would love more really cool professions in books so I'm thinking of Berkeley recently coming out with do your worst by Rosie Dannon and Raiders of the Lost Heart by Joe Segura Segura I don't remember how to say your last name but those two have to do with archaeologists and I would love more books that have like really adventurous and fun cool plots with really fun adventurous cool jobs so it's not just like oh they're a social media manager or oh they are an assistant to the boss I would love really cool adventurous stories and I think that at least trad publishing is doing more of that which makes me really excited do your worst by rosie dannon is definitely like high up on my tbr i am so so excited for that one i reserved it in the library so hopefully i can get that audio soon but i did read raiders of the lost heart and it was a lot of fun it wasn't like everything everything i wanted it to be which i why i gave it four stars but definitely definitely something i'm interested in I do think that fourth wing is going to produce more dragon romances and romancy is going to continue to just grow and grow and like take over the world so i do have my eye on daniel jensen's new one i've heard really good things about that and i feel like that one can definitely make waves in the publishing industry not i don't think as big as fourth wing did this year but I definitely think that's something that a lot of people are going to like and a lot of people are going to be running to buy. We do have Sarah J Mass's new book coming out, which that one, of course, is going to be like crazy, crazy. I've heard they might do some release parties possibly for that one. I have a friend who used to work at Barnes & Noble and so she said that they might, which would be really cool because I'm really, really excited for that third book. Obviously, Sarah J Mass hasn't written in a while, so I do think that romanticy is absolutely taking over the book world and we're going to have so many new books, especially when publishers are picking them up as well because we had, is it Kate Golden, A Dawn of Onyx? Her second book is coming out. We have Carissa Broadbent just came out with her two trad books that were indie before so i don't know if she's gonna come out with anything new and jame and eve just came out with a dragon shifter romance and so i feel like we're gonna see a lot more romances that kind of take on the vein of fourth wing and do more dragons and maybe more tournament style stuff because that's also what curse of broadbent did and that would be really cool to have because i am 
also like I only want to read dark angsty and fantasy right now like that's all I really want to read and I was trying to read Christmas romances I am not in the mood right now like last year I read so many Christmas romances leading up to Christmas and I still have a week left until Christmas and I'm like I'm kind of over it even though I have a lot on my TBR still and I want to start reading all the fantasy romances I have like four that were on the Goodreads Choice Awards that I have have that I'm like, yes, I want to read these. I have noticed too that a lot of authors are leaving YA for adults, which is really interesting. I definitely think like Emily Henry paved the way for that. She was a YA author before she wrote um, Beach Read. And I know Cassandra Clare just wrote her first adult fantasy. Carrie Maniscalco just wrote an adult fantasy and they were both primarily YA. We have Christina Forrest leaving YA to write adult romance. I think she's also still writing YA, but I feel like there are a lot of authors shifting towards the adult audience, which is really exciting because I do think that just reading in general, especially for adults, has blown up so so much and i mean we can acknowledge that tiktok did have a part of that but i definitely think that fantasy will continue to explode i'm really excited to see what authors will be writing fantasy if we see any more because rebecca Eros, if you guys don't know is primarily a contemporary romance author she was writing i read her what is it called wilder was the first book and i really liked it and i also read the last letter she wrote a lot of very emotional military romances um wilder was new adult took place on like this this group of people were like bmx people they would do just like extreme stunts and i think they were like in college like on a cruise or something i read it in 2018 or 2019 so it's been a while but she had always wanted to write fantasy so i think that authors are also given the opportunity to write what's hot in the market since romanticy is so hot in the market right now i'd be really interested to see what authors end up writing it that have always wanted to but never gotten picked up by a publisher for it so that's going to be very interesting i think beverly jenkins mentioned wanting to do that too which would be so iconic i don't know if she will but that would be really really cool other than that, I think that the angst that I want will definitely come in like second chance romances and what else? I don't know. I mean, I do like friends to lovers, but give me the angst in 2024. Give me the pain. I do need to seek out more of the books that I've been putting off because I think I will absolutely love them. So like Magnolia Parks, people love it. People love the angst. I'm very excited. Oh, you know who wrote a fantasy is Jessa Hastings. She wrote a fantasy as well. So it's really cool to see these authors getting to branch out and what they want to do. I don't know if Bridgerton is going to have an effect on historical romances. I don't know if it'll affect me. I have not read a historical romance in a while. I devoured them last year and I really slowed down this year. I've been maybe reading two historical romances a month and it used to make up over half of my reading. But... Bridgerton is gone like Bridgerton has not been here for two years and it's not coming out until April of next year and I know what people so many people have told me it's because of the strike and I know but I feel like it was just pushed back even more in general than because of the strike because it's been two and a half years a strike does not push it back two and a half years is from when it's going to be published from when the last season came out right the last season came out February of 2022 this one's coming out April and may so it's gonna almost have been two and a half years and they did have queen charlotte that one was super popular too but i feel like queen charlotte didn't put us back in the historical romance mood so i don't know if bridgerton will i don't know what publishers are going to do i feel like the new covers and this new shift towards contemporary historical readers really ruined the genre for me at least because i don't love any of the contemporary rom-com illustrated cover historical romances anymore like i have to still go back to my tried and true stacy reed diana quincy lenora bell like i need to go lorraine heath like all the ogs still writing i usually love their books still but i haven't been reaching for them so i'm behind on two lorraine heath releases and i haven't read diana quincy's new one i still haven't read scarlet peckham's harper st george have not read them. I did get the new Kate Bateman in the mail though and I love her and she is still writing. I read one of her novellas and that was indie published and it was so so good. So maybe having Bridgerton come back will put me in the historical romance mood again and other people but I don't know and there are some indie historical romance authors I definitely want to check out because I feel like you get more of like the 
not gritty but more of the to the roots of historical romance in them as well i just have not felt that from trad historical romances lately and it makes me sad so that's why i haven't been reaching for it as much but maybe it'll put me in the mood maybe i should rewatch seasons one and two over christmas and that'll put me back in the mood but we'll see i don't know i it makes me sad i do want to read some of the more of the ogs because sky o'malley when that show comes out i'm going to be crazy because that book was so good and i know it's supposed to be a show and i really hope people love it and i really hope they do it well because that book was so fun i do need to read more of kathleen woodowis because i didn't like the flame and the flower but i've been told ashes in the wind is better shanna was for sure better so i do want to continue going through my collection i have two whole bookcases triple stacked of old school historical romances so i need to get back into the groove of reading historical romances picking up old ones because they are just so good and emotional and again very angsty and i love it we are reading a joanna Lindsay for historical hellions but i feel like you just can't get that in today's historical romances which is very sad the closest you come is like lorraine heath because she was writing back in the 90s too but all the other og ones are gone i do love adriana herrera her new one last year historic romance was so good and it was sapphic and i love the queer historical romances we're getting so i do want to check out some of those that have been coming out because i think that they delve into a world of historical romances that the other ones aren't because the like you can only do regency so many times if there's no good emotional angsty romance to it like nothing standing out to me so that's just hard with historical romances but yeah it'll be very interesting to see what authors really come out and make a shine i don't know if cowboys are gonna stick around i feel like people are kind of over cowboys that really dominated 2023 but am i excited for cowboys i don't know i kind of wanted to read lila sage before the end of the year but are we still fawning over cowboy romances? Because Elsie is starting her new series. We are done with the Eaton Brothers. We are done with the Chestnut Springs series. I didn't even read the synopsis of her new series, so I don't know if it's a cowboy or not. I don't know. Are billionaires going to still be a big deal? I feel like they always are, but I do feel like a lot more people are going towards dark and mafia, which is really exciting. Whenever I look at the top 100 on Amazon, there's always some kind of mafia going on in there. I'm definitely gravitating more to why choose. I love reading more fantasy paranormal why choose too. Tessa Hale has a dragon series coming out in January that I'm super excited for. That's why choose. So like I said, just more kind of going towards the trends of romanticy and fantasy and more just not contemporary i don't know what it is about just straight up contemporary that i'm just not wanting right now and i don't know if everybody else feels the same but let me know your thoughts on what you think is going to be trending in 2024 do you think people are going to still want the small town cowboy do you think we're over that phase I think there's some authors that'll still write it that I'll read, like Ava Hunter just started her one series, but it's definitely a little bit angstier because I think the next one has a lot of history between them, which I'm really excited for in her one series, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I got a little bit more of my scarf done, which was much needed. I'm not done yet because I don't, I need it to be a little bit, I want it to go down to like here. So I need just a little bit more. A little bit more but it's gonna look so good i'm very excited so hopefully i can finish tomorrow so i can mail it out and it gets there maybe the week of christmas not on christmas but the week of christmas but thank you for sitting down and chatting with me this was fun let me know if you want more of these chatty videos and what your thoughts are for the new year i'm very interested to see what all is going to be coming out which you think is going to be popular let me know and that's all i have as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye